I'm Brent Peterson. I'm going to present distance vector routing. It's an adaptive routing algorithm. It will be distance vector. It's non-RIP. It's a generalization of RIP, but I will afterwards talk about uh, aspects of RIP that are specific. Necessary slow counting to infinity, Poison reverse, split horizon, and it's relevant to RIP v6. I have the references shown there. This is the network under consideration. <clears throat> There's a host X, host Y, routers A, B, C. The costs are associated with the output. So to go from router A to network N1, the cost is 2. To go from router A to router B, the cost is 2. It costs 2 to get onto the network and it's 0 to enter. The cost to go from B to A is 5. It costs 5 to get onto the network from B and 0 to enter. Similarly, from C to B is 4, from B to C is 1. And there are 5 networks, N1 to N5. These are some of the definitions. A is a router, X, Y are hosts. These are the networks. DN is destination network. <clears throat> LC is link cost. NR is next router. DV distance vector. Distance vector for router A, B, C. And DV AL is the potential distance vector using router A with link cost. The updates are simultaneous. Every 30 seconds, precisely in RIP, but it was at some point in research advocated to change it a little bit, but initially it was every 30 seconds. Distance vector routing will be shown. Numbers greater than 16 are used, whereas with RIP all the LCs, should have been LCs, are 1 and 16, all the link costs are 1 in RIP and 16 means infinity. So what's shown here is the network on top of a blank routing table for for various times for router A, B, C. <clears throat> Initially, when the routers are powered on, the link costs are as shown. A, the cost to get to N1 is 2. In A, the cost to get to N1 is 2. In A, the cost to get to N2 is 6, shown here. In A, the cost to get to N4 is 8. And there's no next routers. And it would be similar for B and C. B, B to N1 is 5, B to N3 is 1, shown here. And B doesn't know how to get to N2, N4, and N5 when B is powered on. Similarly, C can connect at 2, N2, N3, N5 at a cost of 3, 4, and 9, and 2, and 3, and 5 at a cost of 3, 4, and 9. And so these distance vectors are just copied over. So this is the distance vector to A at time 0, and A doesn't know how to get to these networks. Something else that can be written into this table now are all the link costs. The convention here will be link cost plus distance vector equals new distance vector. So all the link costs here are 2 because if router A is going to use router B as its next router, then it costs 2 to get a packet from router A to router B. This is over here. To get a packet from router A to router B, the link cost is 2. Similarly, to get a, if router A was considering using router C as the next router, it costs 6 to send a packet from A to router C. So these 6s are shown here. This is shown over here in that for router A to consider using router C as its next router, the cost is 6. <coughs> Pardon me. So, uh, similarly for router B, using A as its next router, there's a link cost of 5. B using A as a next router, the link cost is 5. B using C as a next router, the link cost is 1. B using C as its next router, the link cost is 1. And C using A as its next router, it's 3. C using A as its next router, the link cost is 3. C using B as its next router, the link cost is 4. C using B as its next router, the link cost is 4. So we can write these numbers down. And for time 2, it would be similar for router A. 
for time to it would be similar for router B. So these the fives are the same as these fives. And for time to it's the same, threes and fours and threes and fours. So the next thing is to exchange routing tables. What we're going to do is the routing table updates are exchanged simultaneously. So router A will give these numbers to router B. It will give 2, 6, dash, 8, and dash. Dash means it doesn't know, but I'm just labeling it here as dash. 2, 6, dash, 8, dash would be copied over here. 2, 6, dash, 8, dash. And it would be copied here. 2, 6, dash, 8, dash. And so on. This is shown in this diagram. So 2, 6, dash, 8, dash is shown here. 2, 6, dash, 8, dash, and 2, 6, dash, 8, dash. At the same time, router B would give its routing table to its neighbors, A and C. Router B would give its routing table to A and C. And so, currently at time zero, router B's routing table is 5 dash 1 dash dash. So, this is copied over here, 5 dash 1 dash dash. And it's copied over here, 5 dash 1 dash dash. And router C gives its routing table to A and B dash 3, 4, dash 9 is dash 3, 4, dash 9 and dash 3, 4, dash 9. So the routing tables are exchanged and they're exchanged simultaneously. So the next step would be for router A to make a decision about what the best uh, route is to get to network N1 or route to get to network N1. So router a has, regarding network N1, has three choices, 2, 7, and dash. Dash means it doesn't know anything about this. So at this point, the 2 is the smallest of these three numbers. And so 2 would be the distance vector to network N1. And in this case, there's no next router, because router A will put the packet on network N2 directly. On the next line, comparing C dash and 9, the lowest of the three numbers is 6. And so the next router is uh, dash because A puts the packet directly on N2. You can see that here. A puts the packet directly on N2 at a cost of 6. Comparing dash 3 and 10, well, now the minimum is 3, and that's in the column for B. So this is saying after this update, if router A wants to send a packet to network N3, it should send it to router B at a cost of 3. <clears throat> right, so at a cost of 3. So, for uh, on the next line, 8 dash dash, we would put 8 and dash, there's no next router. Dash dash 15, the distance vector is 15, and the next router is C, because this would be the choice. So at time, these are the calculations done by router A. Router B would have similar calculations now. 5, 7 dash, the minimum is 5, and so there's no next router, because B can put the packet on network N1 directly at a cost of 5, shown here in the diagram. Dash 11, 4, the min minimum is 4, the next router would be C, we put a C here. 1 dash 5, the minimum is 1, and there's no next router. Dash 13 dash, the minimum is 13, and A would be the next router. Finally, dash dash 10, so 10 is the minimum, and C is the next router. For router C, <clears throat> dash 5, 9, the minimum is 5, A is the next router. 3 dash, excuse me, 3, 9 dash, the minimum is 3, no next router. 4 dash 5, the minimum is 4, no next router. Dash 11 dash, the minimum is 11, and A is the next router. And 9 dash dash, 9 is the distance vector for router C, and there's no next router. 
you know, can you can check that some of the things make sense. For example, router C, if it wants to put a packet on network N4, it sends it to router A next, and the cost is 11. So if router C wants to send a packet to network N4 over here, the cost is 11, 3 from here, and 8 from here, totaling 11. In fact, this is why it's called a distance vector algorithm. You have, you know, a vector has both magnitude and direction, and so in some sense this is the magnitude, the 11, <clears throat> and the direction is router A. This is time 1. We repeat this for time 2. So I've only shown the time 1 column and shifted it over. <clears throat> so now the numbers are copied. A sends its routing table to B and C, 2, 6, 3, 8, 15. 2, 6, 3, 8, 15. 2, 6, 3, 8, 15. B sends its table to A and C, 5, 4, 1, 13, 10. 5, 4, 1, 13, 10. 5, 4, 1, 13, 10. C sends it to A and B, 5, 3, 4, 11, 9, 5, 3, 4, 11, 9, 5, 3, 4, 11, 9. We add up all the numbers, we find the minimum. The minimum of 2, 7, and 11 is 2, and there's still no next router. For router A, which is the first one, it's hidden here now, for router A to send a packet to network N, Two. It's N1, N2, N3, N4, N5, router A. The cost is 2. Router A is always going to, for sending a packet to network N1, always just do the put the packet on the network directly. Similarly, 6, 6, 9. The minimum is 6 and B. Ah, I see I've made an error here. For network N2, and this error would be instructive, for network N2, for router A to put a network on N2, the cost is, two, is 6. That's what was shown earlier here. Now, router A has learned there's another way for it to get to network N2. it sends the packet this way at a cost of 2, plus 1, plus 3. So, there are two ways for router A to get a packet to N2. It can put the packet on the network directly, or it can send it through 2, 1, and 3. And so, why well, made an error here, and this should in fact be dash, it shouldn't be B, because you only update the next router column if the new number is lower. And so I should not have updated this column. This should be A. And the distance vector is 6. So actually, sorry, it should be router A. So I should leave the dash here. Right? This should be a dash, meaning there's no next router. A puts the packet on network N2 directly. So although the cost is 6 this way and the cost is 6 to go all the way around, you don't change the next router column unless the new cost is lower. So this should be a dash here. Next, 3, 10, 3. The minimum is 3. And I've done the same mistake. Oh no, this is correct. Before it was, no, no, it's, before it was B and 3 and it's still B and 3. Wait a minute, N3, B goes to network N3. R sorry, router A putting a packet on network N3. It costs three to go this way, and it's gonna cost, so it'll, al it'll always go this way. This was correct, and it, it stays correct in this line. Router A, so the minimum of eight, 15, and 17 is eight, and there's no next router. The minimum of 15, 12, and 15 is 12, and B is the next router. Next, 
doing the calculations here, the minimum of 5, 7, and 6 is 5, and there's no next rudder again. The minimum of 4, 11, and 4 is still 4. It's still rudder C, no change. The minimum of 1, 8, and 5 is 1, no next rudder for rudder B. 13, 13, and 12, the minimum is 12. So the next rudder changes. So this is a good example where router B, initially to get to network N4, router B would send the packet to A and the cost is 13. But now router B has learned there's a better way to send the packet to network N4. It sends it through router C and the cost is 12. This is over here. For router B to send a packet up here to N4, initially the cost was 5 this way plus 8 is 13. But now router B has learned there's a faster way. It sends it this way at a cost of 1 plus, and in the direction of C, plus 3 is 4, plus 8 is 12. And so according to the costs shown in this network, the best way for router B to send a packet to network N4 is to use C as the next router, and the total cost is 12. So that got updated here. Router C, sorry, continuing, uh, the minimum of 10, 20, and 10 is 10, and C remains the next rudder. On the last line, 5, 5, 9, the minimum is 5, A remains as the next rudder. The minimum among 3, 9, and 8 is 3, there's no next rudder. The minimum among 4, 6, and 5 is 4. Uh, still no next rudder. The minimum among, minimum among 11, 11, and 17 is still A. It's unchanged. And the minimum among 9, 18, and 14 is 9, and there's no next rudder. So again, up here in this diagram, uh, this, this B should be a dash. All right, so with RIP, true RIP, the um, little line costs are all 1, and uh, infinity is 16, and the, <clears throat> what will happen is if there's a network outage, the link cost will slowly, every 30 seconds, update, and the routing tables will eventually reach infinity. It can take 5 to 6 minutes for routers running RIP to figure out that some networks are unreachable. So this slow counting to infinity is necessary to resolve some network outages, but <clears throat> people learned over time there were some improvements they could make. Something called poison reversed is an option where <clears throat> when a router learns that it costs 16 to get to a network, it broadcasts that information immediately. It doesn't wait for a 30 second update. And split horizon, the idea is that you don't send routing table entries to a router if it is the next router. And so I have an example from the table here. Router, this is router A, and this is time 1. And so for network N3, router B is the next router, and the cost is 3. Well, that's fine. But at time 2, router A is not going to send this row to router B, because router B knows how to get to network N3. So router A is not going to tell router B how to get to network N3. This is split horizon. You don't send the routing table entries to a router if it is the next router. And although it, you can, it, it would take a far more elaborate example to show why split horizon helps to identify outages more quickly. In some ways, you can see if you're sending if A sent to B this information that A can get to router to network N3, then B thinks, well, okay, I can't get to network N3, but now A can. And they, they confuse each other until they do a slow count to infinity. So split horizon is one way to alleviate that. In uh, networks running RIP, there can be fluttering when packets take different routes when the updates change. You minimize that by making sure you don't change the next router unless the new cost is lower, something I mentioned earlier, that that mistake I wrote down but corrected in the, the voice. Looping is when the packets loop until the time to live expires and the packets are thrown away.
Thank you.